Hello there, very good evening and a warm welcome to the news live on Rupaini Channel I. I'm Sharon Masquinias. A very good evening indeed, I'm Javed Bongzo and we begin with the headlines of tonight's news. The eastern terminal of the Colombo Harbour comes fully under the purview of the Ports Authority. The relevant cabinet paper is to be submitted to the cabinet today. The final report of the Easter Commission handed over to the President. More than 59,000 persons received the AstraZeneca vaccine. Those fully cured from the COVID-19 disease exceeds 90%. The army retakes control of Myanmar. Now for those and other stories in detail. Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa reiterates that the eastern jetty of the Colombo Harbour will not be handed over to another party. He made these remarks at a discussion with the Harbour Trade Union Collective at the Temple Trees today. A cabinet paper declaring 100% ownership of the eastern terminal to the Ports Authority is scheduled to be presented to the cabinet today. The trade union said that it will suspend its trade union action soon after the release of the relevant official communique. The trade union campaign to protect the eastern terminal have commenced an agitation recently against the alleged government handing over of the ownership and management of the eastern jetty of the Colombo Harbour to a foreign country. It was later developed to a state of a work to rule campaign. The Prime Minister has stressed that the eastern terminal will not be handed over to a foreign country or to an organisation. He has informed the trade unions that solutions could be found to the problems through discussion. Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa was also reported to have stated at the meeting that the government's main policy is not to sell local resources. Accordingly, the Prime Minister has reiterated that the eastern terminal of the Colombo Harbour will not either be sold or its management entrusted upon any country. He has further stated that the eastern terminal will continue to function as an institute 100% under the control of the Ports Authority. It has also been pointed out that the minister in charge, Rohit Abegunawadana, has pointed out a committee to look into the issue. The committee report has been presented to the president and the prime minister. The fact-containing report has also been presented to the relevant foreign company. However, it has also been stated that the committee has not agreed to the facts pointed out in the committee report. Therefore, Minister Rohit Abegunawadana said at a discussion held this morning that a cabinet paper declaring the Eastern Terminal as an institute 100% under the control of the Ports Authority will be presented to the cabinet this afternoon. The trade union collective safeguarding the Eastern Terminal has endorsed the decision. Accordingly, the trade union collective has agreed to call off its work to rule trade union action with effect from tomorrow. The trade union leaders at the meeting were also reported to have requested a written document guaranteeing not to hand over the eastern terminal of the harbour to any other party. Prime Minister has responded saying that in his 50 years of political life, he has resolved a large number of trade union agitations and not in any single instance has he ever given such written responses. Prime Minister Mahindra Rajpaksa has reiterated that if he makes a statement, he will fulfil it accordingly. He has further stated that the government officials are bound to implement the decisions taken by the Prime Minister at the meetings. The Prime Minister has also pointed out that the decisions taken by him should not be restricted to the negotiating table but should be turned into action. The officials attended the meeting included Prime Minister's Secretary Gamini Senrat, Chief of Staff of the Prime Minister's Office Yoshida Rajabaksa, Secretary of the Ministry of Ports UDC Jayalal, Secretary to the Ministry of Water Supply Priyat Bandhuvikrama, Chairman of the Sri Lanka Ports Authority General Dayarat Naika, Director General of Trade Unions of the Prime Minister Sumit Vijay Singh and representatives of 23 trade Trade unions of the harbour. Opinions have also been expressed in this connection at several media briefings held today. The final report of the Presidential Investigation Commission on the Easter Sunday attack was handed over to President Gotabi Rajpaksa today. It was presented to the President by the Chairman of the Commission, Supreme Court Judge Janak De Silva, at the President's office. Former President Maithi Pal Sirisena has appointed the Commission on the 22nd of September 2019 to investigate and report on the series of terror attacks that took place on the 21st of April 2019 and also to make recommendations on necessary action to be taken on facts disclosed through such investigations. Eight suicide bombers had unleashed a series of attacks on the 21st of April 2019 targeting Catholic churches and several luxury hotels.
Accordingly, terrorist bombers had carried out bomb blasts at the churches of St. Anthony's, Kochikade, St. Sebastian's, Katwapite and Zion in Batklo. The hotels that had come under attack were Shangri-La, Kingsbury and Cinnamon Grand. Two more suicide bombings had taken place in Dematagoda and Dehivala. 270 persons were killed and nearly 500 injured in these attacks. The Presidential Commission investigating on the incidents has recorded evidence from 457 persons within a period of 214 days. Among those who had testified before the Commission were numerous politicians, including former President Maitri Pal Sirisena, heads of security divisions, religious leaders, as well as groups who had faced the attacks and those connected to the activities. The final report is comprised of 472 pages, 215 annexures and six volumes. The preliminary interim report was handed over on the 20th of December 2019 and the second interim report on the 2nd of March 2020 to the President Gotabi Rajpaksa. The officials present on the occasion of the handing over of the final report were President Secretary P.V. Jasundara, President's Chief Advisor Lalit Viratunga, members of the Commission Appeals Court Judge Nishanka Bandula Karnaratna, retired High Court Judges Nial Sunil Rajpaksa and Bandula Kumar Atapattu, former Secretary to the Minister of Justice W.M.M.R. Adhikari and Secretary to the Commission H.M.P. Buoneka Hera. The number of recoveries from COVID-19 has reached 58,075 today. It is a percentage of 90.03. Another 9.48% of patients is under treatment, which includes 6,114 patients. 7,338 have left the hospitals from last week after recovering from the virus. The highest number of persons leaving the hospital within one day after recovering from the illness was recorded on the 28th of last month, which is 1,869. 916 persons have left today after recovering from the virus. Another 348 COVID-19 patients were detected in the island today. 15,628 PCR tests have been conducted yesterday. A total of 1,724,027 PCR tests have been conducted so far in the country. Three more COVID-19 related deaths were reported yesterday. The victims were residents of Colombo 8, Kaduela and Angurua Tota. The deceased were aged 38, 68 and 69 years respectively. Meanwhile, the Pindavala, Deivala and Ridhyagama parks of the Department of Zoological Gardens have been reopened with effect from today. State Minister Vimala Veera Disanayaka and others have participated in the reopening of the Deivala Zoological Gardens today. 25 persons who have ignored health protective measures have been arrested within the past 24 hours, which ended at 6 a.m. today. 2,930 have been arrested so far in connection with the offence. And a request has been made to hoist the national flag at all government and private institutions as well as in residences from today till the 7th of this month. This was disclosed at a special media briefing held today to enlighten on the 73rd National Independence Day celebrations. Minister Chamal Rajapaksa said that they are giving priority to religious observances this year like in the previous years. Accordingly, a period chanting ceremony will commence at the Independence Square at 9 p.m. tomorrow. The President, the Prime Minister, Ministers and MPs will attend this event. An arms giving to the Mahasangha has been organised the following morning. The Minister further said that it has also been organised to conduct religious observances in other religious institutions as well. Minister Kehli Rambukwala said that the Independence Day will be commemorated with gallantry adhering to health guidelines. Minister Kehli Rambukwala said that a special committee has been appointed to follow in the exact manner of the instructions provided by health divisions. Minister Chamal Rajpaksa is the head of the special committee. Defence Secretary General Kamal Gunratna said that all troops participating in this year's Independence Day Parade would be subjected to PCR or rapid antigen tests.
Police media spokesman DRG Ajit Rohan requests all to extend this cooperation to a special traffic plan prepared in connection with the National Independence Day ceremony. Police media spokesman DRG Ajit Rohan has said that vehicles are prohibited to enter the Nelum Pukuna roundabout, the library roundabout and the Nidahas Malta during the morning hours as well as on the Independence Day. The DIG also said that the traffic plan will also be implemented from 4 a.m. to 1 p.m. on the 4th of this month, the day of the national independence. He also calls upon the motorists to obey to the orders of the traffic police officials and traffic signals. The President will preside over the commencement of the Vari Saubhagya program on the 5th of this month. A program to educate the general public in this regard was held in Colombo today under the leadership of Minister Chamar Rajapaksa. Minister Chamar Rajapaksa said that the poverty of the rural masses has not been eliminated despite the implementation of large-scale irrigation projects by every previous government. He added that the budget has allocated 45 million rupees to develop large-scale as well as minor irrigation projects. The minister further said that the services of the armed forces, agrarian services department and the land reclamation corporation and other relevant government institutions are to be obtained in the reconstruction of 5,000 minor tanks this year and next year. He also said that the prime minister will preside over the restructuring program of the Wyambe Canal on the 16th of this month. And the State Ministry of State Defence, Home Affairs and Disaster Management has taken measures to implement a special tree planting program in connection with the Independence Day celebrations. A communique issued by the Department of Government Information says that all district secretaries and divisional secretaries have been instructed to engage in planting environmentally friendly plants in public places or in private lands in respect divisions. Instructions have also been given to plant saplings of fruits or medicinal importance in home gardening. Heads of government institutions have also been informed to appoint a person in charge of each sapling planted and to supervise its growth. The relevant officials have also been advised to seek the assistance of government institutions such as Wildlife Department, Environment, Agriculture and Irrigation Ministries and the Mahavali Development Authority. Minister Sam Chandra Sena says a large extent of land under the control of Lands Reforms Commission of the Ministry of Lands had been misused during the previous regime. The Prime Minister requests the general public to inform of such misappropriations to the hotline on Land 1931. Minister SM Chandrasena has made these remarks participating in the ceremony to introduce the new telephone line 1931 at the premises of the Land Reforms Commission. He further said that the people could also submit their complaints and suggestions through the new number. Deputy Director General of Health Services Specialist Physician Dr. Hemantha Herat says that under the COVID-19 immunization program, the AstraZeneca vaccine has been administered on 95,550 persons so far. The vaccination procedure has been conducted successfully throughout the island today as well. The stock of COVID vaccine received by the Kurunagal District Office of the Director of Health Services was reported to have been distributed among all regional hospitals and offices of the Divisional Health Services yesterday. The initial dosage of the required vaccine was inoculated on the health staff numbering around 10,800 in the district. The staff of the Kurunagala Teaching Hospital was also provided the first dose of the COVID vaccine yesterday itself. Accordingly, 500 hospital personnel have been vaccinated. Deputy Director of the hospital, Dr. Chandana Kandangamwa, said that another batch of 10,000 health officials were scheduled to be inoculated today. Staff of the hospitals affiliated to the Bandarwal Office of the Med Medical Office of Health as well as staff of the Bandarwal District Hospital have also been inoculated today. Vaccination of the entire health staff of the Kagala General Hospital has also commenced today. Director of Hospital Dr. Mrs. Mihiri Priangani says that all health staff are to be inoculated within three days. Staff of the Nagara Hospital has also commenced receiving the AstraZeneca vaccine today. It has been planned to complete the vaccination program on the 2,300 staff from the hospital. 
Health employees of the Colombo Municipal Council have also started receiving the vaccine today. Among those who are vaccinated today include the physicians of the Department of Health, nursing staff, female family health workers, public health inspectors, physicians in the Disease Prevention Unit of the Colombo Municipal Council, as well as officials of the Suez Area uh, Ambulance Service. Altogether, 350 personnel were scheduled to be inoculated today. Vaccination of around 3,500 health staff of the Ratnapura General Hospital also got underway today. The maiden vaccine was inoculated on specialist physician on physical diseases of the hospital, Dr. Bandhisri Atnayaka. Administering of the AstraZeneca vaccine of the staff of Dikoy Hospital has commenced today under the supervision of the director of the hospital, Dr. Damika Alha Peruma. Provision of the AstraZeneca vaccine on the health staff, including physicians treating corona patients in Punani and Valikanda, also commenced today. Accordingly, around 300 officers have received the vaccine at the office of Valikanda Divisional Health Services Director's Office. The program has been carried out under the direction of the officer in charge of the treatment center, Dr. Kasun Ranatunga. Health staff of rural hospitals attached to the Dehiovita Division of the Medical Officer of Health have also received the vaccine today. Our correspondent says 73 health personnel of the rural hospitals of Hingural Kanda and Sapumal Kanda have been given the vaccine. Myanmar's military has taken control of the country in a coup and declared a state of emergency following the detention of Aung San Suu Kyi and other senior government leaders, including the president of the country, in the early morning raids today. The coup came just hours before the first session of the new parliament was set to open and follows weeks of worsening political tensions in the country over the disputed election amid rumours that the military could take over. Myanmar's military ceased power on Monday in a coup against the democratically elected government of Aung San Suu Kyi. Other senior figures from the country's ruling party were detained in what the party's spokesman called an early morning raid. On military-owned TV, the Myanmar army declared a state of emergency and said it carried out detentions in response to election fraud. Dozens of soldiers were around the city hall in major city Yangon shortly after the reported arrests. Phone lines to the nation's capital, Ne Da, were not reachable immediately after. Parliament had been set to start there on Monday after a November election. State-run television MRTV showed no signal and said in a Facebook post it had stopped its broadcast due to technical issues. A ruling party lawmaker who requested anonymity for fear of retaliation said Han Tar Mint, a member of the party's Central Executive Committee, was among those detained. A military spokesman did not answer phone calls seeking comment. The arrests come after last November's election, which gave Suu Kyi's party, the National League for Democracy, a landslide victory. The military, which controls key positions in parliament and Suu Kyi's administration, has called the election fraudulent. But they promised over the weekend to protect and uphold the constitution, after suggesting earlier that week they would abolish it, raising fears of a coup. Meanwhile, Myanmar's election commission has rejected the military's allegations of vote fraud. Suu Kyi came to power in 2015 in a landslide election following decades of military house arrest in a struggle for democracy. She had won the Nobel Peace Prize for her effort, but her international standing was damaged after hundreds of thousands of the Rohingya people fled military violence in 2017. At home, she still remains widely popular. In other stories, Minister of Education Professor Gio Piri says it is hoped to reopen schools in the western province on the 15th of this month with the instructions and approval of health authorities. The minister was addressing a media briefing of the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna today. Minister of Education Professor Gio Piri said that so far only classes of grade 12 in the western province have been reopened. He added that parents have requested to reopen classes in other grades as well. The minister also said that they are hoping to conduct talks with the school principal as well as on the issues. Sri 
Minister of Tourism Prasanna Naranthunga reiterates the need to provide knowledge on aircraft technology to school children. Accordingly, air societies are to be formed in joint collaboration with the Ministry of Education. The minister made these remarks participating on the occasion of the recommencement of the Colombo Flying Society today. Edward Pereira of Nigambo has brought 35 types of remote control light aircrafts to an aircraft exhibition held in this connection. The minister has inspected one such aircraft operated by Vapor Power. The minister said that drones and light aircraft are two types of aircraft and therefore two separate types of laws are to be enacted in connection of these aircrafts. The Ministry of Sports commenced a new program with the aim of popularizing cycling. The program has named as Cycling Day. Sports Minister Nama Rajapaksa presided over the inauguration ceremony at the Kimbulavala Junction in Thalavatagoda yesterday. A special lane for pedal cycles has been reserved from the Kimbulavala Junction to the Colombo Racecourse on every Sunday from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. A special code of instructions has also been issued for the cyclists. And that's it for tonight's news. Do watch us tomorrow at the very same time. Good night.